Gauntlet for the NES is a game that truly seems impossible, but it can be beaten. It's a two-player cooperative dungeon crawler with an overhead perspective that calls to mind games like The Legend of Zelda, but Gauntlet is much more frantic and intense. Your character is constantly losing health, and only by eating food and finding treasure rooms can you hope to survive for very long. As a kid, I always thought that Gauntlet was never-ending, and at some point the levels would just start repeating themselves, but that isn't the case at all. Gauntlet features 100 rooms, and at the very end you'll be required to enter a secret code to unlock the Vault of Morak the Evil One, where the sacred orb can be found. Before it was on the NES, Gauntlet was a hit arcade game. Gauntlet, the new fantasy adventure from Atari Games. The most fun a quarter can buy. Programmer Ed Logg had been getting into trouble at work because he kept making video games on company time. In 1978, he finally put his talents to good use and joined Atari's coin-op division. At Atari, he worked on some of the greatest arcade games of all time, including Centipede, Super Breakout, and Asteroids. One of the biggest problems with arcade games in the early 1980s was that players were used to paying 25 cents per play, and increasing the cost of 50 cents was such a turnoff that it was described as the kiss of death. So how could a game generate more money? Ed Logg had been wondering this, and was also trying to figure out how to make a game that incorporated elements from Dungeons & Dragons, the tabletop game that his own son was obsessed with. When Logg played Dandy for the Atari 800, he had his answer. Dandy was created in 1983 by John Howard Palovich, and while it looks very basic, it features many elements that would become the foundation for Gauntlet. You eat food, shoot at enemies from an overhead point of view, navigate maze-like rooms with locked doors that require keys, bombs are used for clearing multiple enemies, and you can even choose to play with one to four players. Four players was the answer Ed Logg had been looking for. The math was simple. If four people were playing, that was four times the amount of money the machine could make. He created a game that improved upon Dandy in every possible way. The four characters in Dandy were all the same, but in Gauntlet they were each different. Thor, the warrior, had the best armor and was built to be a frontline tank. Merlin, the wizard, had the best screen-clearing magic, Thyra, the Valkyrie, was well-balanced, and Questor, the elf, moved the fastest, so he was often known as that jerk that eats all the food. In addition to improving the characters, Gauntlet has much better graphics, 100% all-new levels, and an amazing sound experience that includes digitized voice samples from satirical filmmaker Ernie Faselius. Pressure, 100 points. It was reported that Pavlich tried to sue Ed Logg for stealing the ideas for Gauntlet from Dandy, but he probably didn't have a very strong case. Games were often made by improving aspects of other games, and even Dandy itself was inspired by Konami's 1982 game Tutankham. Rumor has it that their out-of-court settlement included giving Pavlich a Gauntlet arcade cabinet. Gauntlet was a huge success in the arcades, pulling in thousands of dollars for arcade operators. Unlike the NES version, Gauntlet in the arcade has no ending, and eventually the levels start repeating themselves with some elements flipped around. Some savvy players did find a way to live forever in the game, so Ed Logg had to create a patch that would limit the amount of food when only one or two people were playing. Still, most players just pumped in quarters, and while Atari and Ed Logg didn't get any part of the money people spent in the machines, they did sell a lot of arcade cabinets. Gauntlet was ported to many consoles and computers, but the NES version was unique. 
while they had to reduce the number of players from the arcade's four down to two, you could still choose from any of the four characters, and you could even both be the same one. They also added a password system so you could save your game, and created a final boss battle with a three-headed Hydra at the game's climax. Atari released Gauntlet for the NES in 1987 under their 10-gen publishing label. Atari didn't like Nintendo's strict control over game distribution and manufacturing, and when they couldn't figure out how to bypass the NES's lockout chip, they illegally obtained documents from the U.S. Patent Office and used them to create a series of unlicensed black cartridges for the NES. Gauntlet is one of only three games to be released in both a licensed and unlicensed version, although the game itself is the same. Gauntlet was a success on the NES, and while the sequel, Gauntlet 2, was also made for the system, that one was done by Mindscape and is a much more direct arcade conversion. In modern times, Gauntlet is still a favorite among many NES fans. It does not appear on IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time, and that's very surprising. With its 100 rooms and two-player cooperative gameplay, Gauntlet is by far one of the most impressive and most classic games for the NES. On the crowdsourced rating site Ranker.com, Gauntlet can be found at number 56 on their list of every NES game ever released. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. The mazes are difficult, the enemies are vicious, and sometimes even the exit door can be a deadly trap that sends you back to the game's title screen. But what if I told you about secret exits that can skip you ahead fast? What if I showed you how to find all of the clues so you'll be able to open the final vault? And what if I showed you how to get through all 100 rooms and even defeat the dreaded three-headed Hydra at the end? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, We'll learn all of that, and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. All right, Gauntlet. At the beginning of the game, we're going to have to choose which character to play as, and while they all have their own strengths and weaknesses, the most important stat is speed, because we're constantly losing health, and later on in the game there's going to be timed rooms, so we want to choose the elf. If you're playing with two players, you may want to experiment with some combination of the other characters, but as the late Johnny Cochran always said, if you're by yourself, choose the elf. Here in room number one in the upper right corner, there's a secret exit that'll take you all the way to room number five. But should we take this shortcut? We should probably go to room number two instead. The early rooms are very easy to complete, and we want to take that opportunity to get as many treasures as we can. By collecting treasure, we'll be able to increase our health. As soon as we collect 50 treasure, we'll get additional hit points added to our maximum total. After that, we'll need 100, then 200, 400, 800, and possibly 1600, but we probably won't get that many treasure. We start out with a low amount of health as the elf, but we gain a lot of health each time we level up, and by the end of the game, we'll have more health than any other character. It seems unfair, but I guess life is unfair. That's just how it is. If you touch a ghost in this game, it will disappear, but it'll do you damage. 
And up here, there's a bowl of food that will restore 100 hit points before you enter the exit that'll take you to room number two. In here, you want to grab this key, and then we can go through the door on the left or the right. Those white lines are doors, and whenever you cross them or touch them at all, you'll use a key, but the door will disappear. Down here, there are some ghost generators. Ghost generators are always those piles of skulls. And whenever you go through the exit, we'll be in to round number three. The way the enemy generators work here is if you see they just have one skull, that means it's a weak enemy generator, and two skulls or three skulls are the other two levels, so that's one of the more powerful ones. And the more powerful ones will take more damage to destroy, and they'll also make more dangerous enemies. Part of the skill here in this game is trying to remove the enemy generators, and that will limit the amount of enemies that you'll have to fight, so try to kill as many of those as you see. We can shoot through the walls here, and if you shoot through the wall up here, some of these enemy grunts will be attracted to you, and we just want to hurry through this area and get to the exit as quickly as possible, trying to avoid as many of those ghosts as you can. And this is our first treasure room. You want to grab as many treasures as you can, and make sure to go over here on the left side first, where there will always be a key, but the exit will appear in a random location, and you need to find that exit before the time runs out, or you won't get your health refilled. You won't die or anything, but you won't get your health refilled, and you also won't get your password, and it's very important to get your password here at the beginning of the game to make sure that it doesn't start with the letter A. There's a bug in the game. See, our password starts with the number 8, and there's a very low chance of it happening, but if you do get a password that starts with the letter A, so in that case, you would want to start the game over from the beginning. Here in room 5, there's another hidden exit. This one will take you to room number 9, but that will bypass room number 8, which is another one of those treasure rooms, so you probably don't want to skip that. Instead, we want to come up here, try to take out these enemy generators. That's what those brown boxes are. They create these grunt enemies, which just relentlessly will try to attack you. If one of those brown boxes has a skull on it, that means it's a more powerful enemy generator. That red enemy is a demon, and the demon can shoot at you, but it can also shoot at other enemies and even damage them. We can probably spare a key to grab these treasures. We already leveled up once at 50 treasures in room 4, and we just hit 100 treasures here in room 5, so that's why I don't like skipping ahead. You can easily level up twice very quickly here in the first 5 rooms. Once we have the treasure, we'll head back the way that we came. This enemy generator has made a lot of grunts, and we are going to have to head down that way but we want to come up this way through the wall, take out those demons. Those brown tiles are stun tiles, and if you touch them, they'll stop you from moving and make you a sitting duck for a moment. But if you pause the game and unpause, it will negate the effect of the stun tiles. So that's big. At the end there, there is a bomb for us to pick up, so we definitely want to grab it, and also this bowl of food. So add that bomb to our total. You can press the B button to shoot a bomb, but you do want to save those. They will clear out a lot of enemies near you, but they are the only way that we can get rid of the death and acid pool enemies, so we probably want to save those bombs for when we absolutely need to use them. Clear out a few grunts and then head over to the exit, and that will take us on to room number 6. Now you can shoot diagonally here to take out some of these monster generators. All of the classes except for the warrior can do that. The warrior's shots cannot go through the corners like that, so he is just a terrible character to choose. Make your way down here. Those white boxes will make us invisible, and we won't be able to be damaged by the enemies for a few moments, which is great. We can pause the game to get through this stun tile, grab this key, and then head on down this way. 
hopefully holding that invincibility so that we can take out some of these monster generators. Watch out when you see that drink item. That's food, but if you shoot it, it'll go away. And make sure to grab the key on the left side before you head up into this chaos and quickly jump into the exit, which will take us to room number 7. Room 7 is our first true challenge. Take out that grunt generator by shooting through the gap, and then destroy the wall and take out the grunt generator above. We want to clear as many of these enemy generators as we can, and then we're going to go along the bottom where there's a bunch of food, so we can take some damage taking out these generators, and then we'll collect some food to compensate for that. Shoot these demons through the gap, we are going to have to go up into that area later. And once you go through that treasure, you'll want to shoot through those grunts. These grunts a lot of the times look to me like they were holding some kind of large tuna fish instead of a club. Kind of reminds me of some kind of deranged Lou Zealand from the Muppets, I don't know. Head over here to the right once you get to the top of the screen and we're going to take out another one of these grunt generators. The exit that we're looking for is in the upper right corner. But the strategy here is to take out as many of these enemy generators as we can, and then we're going to just head back and eat up all the food. So there's a bowl of food over here. Remember that the difference between the bowl of food and the bottle of drink is that you can destroy that drink bottle if you shoot it by accident. But the bowl of food is more like a treasure, you can't shoot it and destroy it, you would have to touch it and collect it. Either one though is going to restore 100 health. So you want to grab that key, clear out as many of those generators as you can, and then head down here to the bottom. You can shoot through that bit of wall and grab that bowl of food, collect this treasure, and then we're going to get this bowl of food on the bottom and then there's another one right here and inside there there's a bomb that we can grab so we're up to three keys and three bombs right now which is not bad for this early in the game once we have enough food and collected that bomb head back to the top of the screen and we're just going to cut across to the right there's a few more treasures that we can grab before we collect a key and enter the exit in the upper right corner. You'll notice that there's a locked chest down there too. It is way too early in the game to be wasting keys on stuff like that. Room number 8 is another one of those treasure rooms, so remember to collect the key and the treasures on the left side here, and then quickly find the exit. You do not want to be caught not going through the exit, because if you fail, you won't get your health refilled, and your password will not take you back to the current level. Your password will only work if you complete a treasure room. So that one was pretty easy. And we are on to room number 9. Room 9 has kind of a spiral shape to it, and the first thing you'll want to do is take out the monster generators below and above you, so that the monsters don't stack up near the exit. You can actually shoot through the gaps to hit a lot of these monster generators, and you'll want to do that as you go around. You can even hit some that are sort of far away, like that one in the upper right corner there, so you can actually hit that. Come around the spiral and be careful not to shoot those drink items before you collect them. Remember that if you shoot them, you will not be able to eat them. Try to take out any of these monster generators that you can while you're going around the spiral. And you don't want to use your key at that first door, although if you want to use your key at the second one, that may be okay, although it's probably a break-even scenario. There's going to be a death enemy in there, and you'll need to probably use a bomb to clear that death. You can see him right now, he's that black hooded enemy. That guy can only be killed using your potion bombs. So you can clear him like that, and then we can collect another bomb to replace it, as well as another key to replace the one that we used, so we didn't get too much out of that. Head back around the spiral, there's a bunch of enemies over here. If you just press into the enemies, hitting them with the front of your character is okay because you're actually attacking in that case. 
And this is room number 10. Don't go through that key door. There's actually a secret path through the wall on the left side, right in front of that enemy generator. So that will save you a key. Those colorful flashing tiles below are magic tiles, and when you touch them, it will remove part of the wall. Usually that's beneficial, but sometimes it opens up a trap. In this case, we're going to have to walk through that area anyway, so we don't have much of a choice. It opens up the area with those demons, but it will allow us to collect another treasure. And you see that bomb that's stuck between the wall there? We need to touch this flashing tile to be able to open the way to the exit, but it will also open the way to that bomb. Now I'm trying to escape from that death enemy, so you can give him a bit of run around. He will come towards you. But when we go through the exit here, we'll be done with room 10 and on to room number 11. Room number 11 has two exits, and one is definitely better than the other. Avoid that locked chest. It contains reflective shots, and while they sound good in theory, they're actually pretty bad. Touching all those magic tiles will open up a channel down the right side, and that will take you to the exit, which will bring us to room number 13, a treasure room. But that's not where we should actually go. At the bottom of the screen, there's a place where we can shoot through the wall, and we'll be able to collect a bunch of treasures, but more importantly, we'll find the exit for room number 12. Room number 12 is important because it contains the shot power upgrade, which will increase the damage that our arrows deal. Yeah, that's very important, and something that we certainly want to be able to get early on in the game. We hit our 200th treasure, so our max HP is now 1,180. Nice. And once we've collected all those treasures, we'll go through the exit and head on to room number 12. That bottle with the flashing hexagon on it is the shot power upgrade we're looking for, but if you accidentally shoot it, or if one of these demons accidentally shoots it, it will explode and you will not be able to collect it. So make sure to carefully take out that demon generator and any demons that are down there in such a way that you won't accidentally shoot the shot power upgrade yourself. Down here, if you want, use a bomb to take out these acid pools. They can be pretty annoying. Just make sure you get all four of them. And carefully walk up through here and grab that upgrade. You can see it appears here, it's a red circle. If you do find another shot power upgrade in the game, it won't count. But there are four other upgrades that we're going to need to find before we'll have a fully powered up character. We could just head back the way that we came. Once I opened up that locked chest, that's going to open up the way to the goal. But if you head through this way, we can collect a bunch of treasures that are hidden in the upper right corner. So we're going to clear through these ghosts, shooting them with our powered up arrows. The extra shot power will let us deal an additional 20% damage, so that's certainly something that we want. The other powerful upgrades that we can find are one that increases our speed by 20%, one that increases the damage that we deal with bombs, so that's the magic upgrade, one that increases the damage we deal using melee, so whenever we walk into the enemy and attack it from the front, and our armor upgrade reduces the amount of damage that enemies deal to us by 20%. So we're going to be looking for those other four upgrades, but we have one of the five already. I used a bomb to clear that death because there's three of them down there. So now we have seven bombs, very good. And we can grab that food. We want to shoot this block right here, which will reveal a magic tile. And when touched, we can shoot this block and that will create the exit, but there are a couple more treasures, let's grab those first. And then we can head on through, and we'll be on to room number 13. Lucky number 13 is a treasure room, so we'll certainly want to make sure we find the exit in time, so that we can save the fact that we found that shot upgrade. 
There's the exit, so it's nice to know where it is already. We can grab a couple of treasures, but you do not want to be very greedy in here. Make sure that you make it back to the exit with enough time to get through the door. If you don't restore your health, it could be a disaster. And that's it. We've cleared room number 13, and we're moving on to room number 14. There are two exits to room number 14, and while both may seem valid, if you don't go to room number 15, we'll miss the clue room, and whenever we get to room number 100, if we don't have all eight clues, we won't be able to open the vault, and we'll get an unceremonious game over. We can shoot through the wall here, which will save us a key. You won't have to use a key to get through the door over there on the left. And make sure to watch out for these grunts, be careful of these ghosts, and come down here. We can use the bottleneck in the blocks here to take out these grunts, so they have to come through this area, and it should be pretty easy to take them out. And also take out the grunt generator below, so just keep shooting, and eventually that generator will be taken out, and then you can hit all three of those magic tiles. Remember, we don't want to touch that door down there, that'll save us a key, although we have the maximum number of keys right now, which is 10. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you go the wrong way first. So this is room 17. You don't want to go to room 17 if you're trying to find all the clues and actually finish the game. There aren't even that many treasures here in room number 17, so there's not a very good reason to go here at all. Make sure to grab the ones up here on the right side if you do bother to come into room number 17, and you'll notice that there's two exits, but both of them will take you to the same place. If you get to room number 18 by going through room number 17, you'll notice that you won't be able to access room number 15 or 16, and room 16 is that clue room, so we are going to be missing the first piece of the clue if you take this route. Head on through these ghosts to grab another key. If you have 10 keys, you want to try to unlock any doors that you can, and then go back and pick up any keys that you see, because if you pick up any keys whenever you have 10, they will not be counted. So keep that in mind. Try to open some doors first, and then go back and collect the keys, if you have the maximum. Same thing with your bombs. Use a bomb and then pick one up if you already have 10, something you can think about doing. And if you get between the exits, you can grab the food before you head on to room number 18. Room 18 is one from the arcade game, and there's not a lot to see in here, but there is a hidden box of super shots all the way in the upper right corner. See that backwards looking P-shaped formation in the wall? We're going to shoot that from the right side. And there it is, our next 10 shots will be super shots, and that will persist to the next room as well. Super shots go through pretty much everything. They can't kill death or anything like that, but they can destroy locked doors, which is interesting. Although you should be careful, they can destroy exits as well. Room 19 is the treasure room, but let's see what happens if we took the other path in room 14. We want to make sure we get that key over here on the left side, and we can use the bottleneck here to take out these grunts. Make your way to the right, and remember we can shoot through the wall on the right so that we don't have to use a key in the door above. Try to carefully take out those grunts first, and then shoot through the wall. We're going to head up to the top. We want to clear all those magic tiles in the area below where all the grunts are. So we'll shoot these ghosts first, and then we'll use the bottleneck in the blocks here so that we can easily take out these grunts. Just keep shooting from this spot here, and we will eventually get to the enemy generator, and then the grunts will just stop coming. Come down, we'll hit those three magic tiles, collect the other treasure chest, and then we can pick up that key, but instead of going down here and through the exit on the right, 
We want to head back over here to the left and we'll notice that the roof will now be open to go down onto the bottom. We want to clear out these ghosts as we move forward here. So take them out and we can collect up some treasure chests. And now you'll see that the way to room number 15 is open. And that will put us on the path to get to the first clue room. Room number 15 is a very mean one. There's a lot of tight spaces here, tons of grunt and demon generators, and there's even an exit that will take you all the way back to room number 8. What a disaster! You certainly want to avoid that exit, which is the one right there on the screen. We need to find the exit in the upper right corner, and the only way that we're going to be able to get into there is by hitting all three magic tiles. There's one in the upper left corner above that dangerous exit that'll take us back to room number 8 that we want to avoid. And there's one in the lower right corner, and there's one in the middle right near the wall. There's also an armor upgrade which is right there. Be careful to only shoot one arrow at the wall there, and don't be very close to the wall when you're shooting it, because remember, if you shoot the upgrade, you'll destroy it. So carefully just shoot one arrow and make sure to get that armor upgrade, which will increase our defense by 20%. We got the magic tile in the lower right, and now we need to get the one in the upper left corner. So there's actually two good reasons why we want to take this path. In addition to getting us to the clue room, Room 15 also contains that armor upgrade, which is very helpful. So we certainly don't want to miss that. I had to use a potion there, but that cleared everything out. And now we're going to head back to the right side of the wall. That's where the last magic tile is, and we can take out this grunt generator now. And it looks like the way is open. We can clear those enemies with another bomb. We don't have to be too conservative with our bombs this early in the game, but we will want to be very conservative with them later in the game. Once all three magic tiles have been hit, we're going to head to the upper left corner and then follow along the top of the room and go to the exit in the upper right. That's going to take us to room number 16, the first clue room. In this one, we want to grab the two locked chests on the bottom, one of them is the magic upgrade, which increases the damage of our bombs, and the other one will open a path, which will allow us into this food area down here. And once we collect the treasures down in that area, we want to shoot the block in the middle. That will reveal a magic tile. That magic tile will open the way to the clue, which is that question mark, and we need to grab that and then get to the exit before the time expires. Don't get too greedy here, we need to get between those two treasure chests. We'd like to try not opening those and wasting any keys. So we're going to carefully make our way to the exit, and then you'll want to write down whatever the clue is. They will not reveal the other letters each time, so this is the first one, and we will need all eight to get into room number 100, the Vault of Morak. So room 16 is important both for getting the first clue and for getting that magic upgrade. We want both of those things, so you certainly don't want to skip over that one. And that will bring us back to room number 19, the Treasure Room. Grab as much treasure as you can, but remember to make sure to get the key on the left side, and then try to find the exit before the time expires. It's always more important to get to the exit than it is to grab a lot of treasure, and it's got to be down in the lower right here. There it is. Okay, we're running out of time. Being a little bit greedy. All right, we got there, no problem. And that's it. We've completed room 19, and that is the end of World 1, The Castle. World 2, The Dark Forest kicks off here with room number 20. We'll hit the magic tile on the left and then proceed downwards, where we'll see a brand new tile, the teleport tile. 
teleport tiles are that flashing one with the X shape in the middle of it. And whenever you get on one of those, it will teleport you to another teleport tile. And sometimes it'll just spit you out in a randomish location. But normally it will take you to another one of those. So that's typically how they work, although they can be kind of frustrating in some locations. Avoid that locked treasure chest and shoot through the wall here. You don't want to use your key on that door to the right, even though we have our maximum keys right now. And up here, we'll be able to go on through the exit and come into room number 21. This one, there are two exits from. We want to go to the one in the upper right corner, but I'll show you what happens if we go to the wrong exit first. After we hit the magic tile on the right, if we make our way to the left, we can find the exit that will lead us to room number 23, which is a totally valid way to get through the game. We won't miss any clue rooms or anything like that, but the reason why we want to go to room number 22 instead is because that's where we can get an upgrade for our melee attack. The melee attack is whenever you push into an enemy with the front of your character and just kill it that way. This upgrade will make us deal 20% more damage whenever we're attacking in that fashion. So we want to make our way down here, and this will take us to the exit that will get us to room number 23, so I'm going to show you that first, but I actually recommend that we take the other exit, the one in the upper right, that will take you to room number 22. Room 23 has a lot of teleporters in it, and you may need to use a bomb to take out death, but if you shoot through the wall on the right here, we can get a whole bunch of treasures. Any of the exits that you can get to should take you to room number 24. So try to collect as much treasure as you can if you're going this way. But if we go this way, we'll need to find that melee attack upgrade later. We can destroy the wall over here and just pop on through the exit. Room number 24 is a treasure room, but let's see what happens if we go back to room number 21 and take the other path. Before we head to the upper right corner, let's try to clear some of these enemy generators. We certainly don't want there to be too many demons around. So take out all of these demons. And just clear any of the remaining enemies as well. We are going to be heading into that area. Down at the bottom, we can take out another generator, and then we want to hit that flashing magic tile. But be careful of death. He's going to try to chase us, so hopefully we can get away from him and we can use the teleporter up here to kind of cheat death and not have to use one of our bombs. Up here, there's a whole bunch of treasures, so grab those and then take this exit to get to room number 22. Down in the bottom right corner is where we'll find that melee attack upgrade, and we have a lot of keys. We can try to get through some of these doors before we collect the keys that are up near the top left. We had to use some of our bombs because of all the death enemies. It's really the only good way to clear them. And down here, we can shoot through a bunch of these grunts to make our way to the enemy generators, and then we should be able to destroy them. At the bottom, we want to hit that magic tile, and then we can cross through this teleporter and hit the other magic tile. There's a third magic tile up above, and that will open the path back down to the bottom, where we can grab that melee attack upgrade. Make sure that you don't shoot it, Remember that if you shoot it, it will be destroyed, and then we won't be able to get any credit for it. You can head to the exit at this point, but there are a few more treasures if you want to grab them before you go, and also restock your collection of keys. There's a bomb potion at the top that we should try to collect. It's okay if we take some damage here. The next room is going to be room number 24, and that's a treasure room, so as long as we survive long enough to find the exit, We'll be able to refill our health, and it'll be no problem. So collect up whatever you can, and then make your way to the exit. And here it is, room number 24. This is a slightly different treasure room than we're used to, because we're in World 2 now. 
We got our 400th treasure, and now our max HP is 1300, which is nice, because as long as we find the exit here, we'll be able to get that maximum HP. In here, there's a large bit of treasure that we always want to collect, so make sure to get that big chunk. And at the bottom of it, you can shoot your way through the wall, and the exit could be down there at the bottom, so don't forget about that when you're searching around. In room 25, there are a couple of locked treasure chests, but they all contain food, so unless you miss the exit there in room 24, you shouldn't need to waste your keys on any of them. We also see these white blocks. They can be pushed around, but they can bunch up into some bad spots occasionally and block off areas, so you do have to watch out for them a little bit, but usually they're pretty safe. Here we can push some downwards and then take the teleporter. That'll get us into this lower area where there's a bunch of those magic tiles, so we can push that block out of the way and try to hit some of these tiles. We need to hit all four of them. That should open up everything and maybe take out some of these demons on the right side. Remember, the locked treasure chests are food and we don't need that. And we certainly don't need that white box with the arrow on it. That is the reflective shots which is a pretty annoying power-up that actually makes you worse. So don't get that. If you want to grab the treasure, grab it, but try not to touch the reflective shots. And there is some food and treasure in the lower left corner as well. We don't want to go in the exit for room 27. Instead, make your way to the right, and we're going to follow the path and go to the upper right corner so that we can get into room 26. Once again, there's another one of those locked chests. We don't need it, it's just food. There's a lot of food just lying out in the open if you need some. So just grab that whenever you want to. And remember, if you have 10 keys, to try to open up some doors first, and then pick up the keys that you see littered about. We're going to try to escape those deaths and just get up into the exit. And this is room 26 which is another clue room. Not only does this room contain one of the essential clues to open the Vault of Morak, but there's 10 bomb potions here, so we can be a little bit reckless with our bombs in this room and clear a bunch of the enemies out with them, and then go down and refill ourselves to the maximum number of 10. So definitely try to grab as much treasure as you can, don't worry too much about using your bombs, and make sure that you fill up to the full 10 before you leave. The clue and the exit are both up in that treasure matrix in the upper left corner, so that's where you're going to head, go through that teleporter. In one of the locked chests in there, you'll find the clue. And then just hold right as you're teleporting, and that should take you into the door that will take us to room 27. Our second clue is M, but your clue may be different. It all depends on what the first number or letter of your password is. You want to quickly take the path to the right here so that those white blocks don't get pushed into an awkward position and block off the essential path. Up here we can find a black invincibility box, and this will prevent enemies from damaging you but it will increase the speed that you're naturally losing health. So whenever you grab that, you can be a little bit reckless with the enemies, but just remember that your health will be draining a bit more quickly than it normally would. Head down here and grab the food. You should be able to avoid that death. The exit is at the very bottom, and there are several exit doors. All of them will take you to room number 28, but if you can maneuver between the doors, there's actually some bowls of food that you can pick up, so try to get around the exits and grab that food and then take whichever one you want. There's several paths you can take here in room 28, but I like to just go all the way to the right and then push through those blocks at the top, take out the demon generator, and you can get some super shots in that locked chest, but I would just save your key. Head on down to the bottom and curve around here to the left. Over on the left side, that treasure chest has a bomb potion in it, which we certainly don't need at this point. We have 10, the maximum. 
And we want to go all the way to the top here, so just follow the path around and take out these ghost enemy generators. That brown box is the temporary repulsion amulet, and for a short time it will make enemies like ghosts and grunts run away from you, but it doesn't seem to work on those acid puddles. So try to group a bunch of them on the screen whenever you use a bomb to clear them, and there will be a bomb over here on the right to replace the one that you used. That magic tile that we hit will open an easy route to the exit, so we can just follow the path back the way that we came, and you'll see that the wall opened up on the left side of the exit door, and then we don't have to go past both of those deaths to get to room 29. Room 29 is another one of those World 2 treasure rooms. Don't forget about the big matrix of treasure in that area right down here. Right in here, get all these. And that the floor there can be destroyed, so don't forget about that also. Remember, we don't want to be too greedy. I see that the exit is on the right of the wall there, so we can also loop back around to the left to get to it. Once we've completed the treasure room, we'll have a full set of health, and it'll be time to take on room 30, which has several exits that we can choose. Let's see what happens if we take the one in the lower left corner, which will take us to room 31. Room 31 is an annoying one, so I certainly recommend taking a different path in room 30 so that you can bypass this one. If you simply must come to room 31, the best way to understand it is that the bottom room that has the bomb potions has a locked chest that contains a magic tile that will open the way to the exit. The room with the drinks in it has a locked chest that contains a key, so that one's a bit more of a waste of your time. That's what you're looking for. You're trying to get into the room that has the two bomb potions so that you can open the locked chest up, and that will open the way that you need to go to the exit. So this is the room we were looking for. We can collect those bomb potions, and since we know we need to get two of those, we could use a few, but one of those demons actually destroyed one of the potions, which is pretty annoying. Stupid demon. We'll come here through the ghost, grab some of these treasures, and take the exit, which takes us to room 35. You may be thinking, room 35? We've skipped way ahead. Well, not exactly. Whenever we finish room 35 here, it's going to take us back to room 34. So we're not really getting away with anything here. And this room is a fairly annoying one as well. At some point, we're going to have to pick up the reflective shot. I've mentioned before that that's not a very good power-up, but we're not going to have much of a choice in this one. We want to clear out as many of the enemy generators from the top of the screen as we can, and try to do as much damage as possible before we have to pick up that stupid reflective shot. Head through here, we can actually destroy a lot of the blocks in the walls, and that will give us some good vantage points to take out some enemy generators. And you can see there are two of those reflective shot boxes here. And one of those is the one that's just going to be in the way. So before we collect it, let's just take out as many enemies as we can. And well, bite the bullet, we have to do it. And here's the problem. As we're shooting around, if we miss a shot, our arrow may bounce around for a while. And we won't be able to shoot again until it goes off of the screen or disappears. So that's the problem with the reflective shot. We need to keep working our way downward and hitting as many of those magic tiles as we can, and that will open up more parts of the wall, and eventually we'll be able to get down into the exit and make our way to room 34. Whew, bunch of deaths over here. If you land on the exact space where a death is whenever you teleport, that's another way that you can kill death. So aside from using a bomb, that's pretty much the only other way that you can do it. 
And this is room 34. Now let's see if we had gone a different way in room 30. Maybe through one of the exits in the upper right or the upper left, which would take us to room 32. Room 32 will put us on a slightly different path, and there's a bunch of treasures that we can pick up in here. We would like to make sure that we kill both deaths if we use a bomb to try to remove one of them, so make sure they're grouped close enough together so that you can clear both of them. And then you want to hit some of those magic tiles to open up the way. Down here on the left we can take an exit. Either exit will take you to room 33. There are a lot of false exits and bad exits in this room, many of which will take you back to room number 32, and we just came from there. We don't want to go back to room 32. This one between the treasures is a false exit, so that's not even an exit at all. And the one that we're looking for is near two demon generators at the top of the screen, so that's where we want to head to. That's the one up there. So we want to try to hold up maybe when we're using the teleporters. It seems like the teleporters work a bit randomly, but if you hold directions, sometimes that can influence them. So we'll try that and it worked this time. And just clear out some of the demons and we'll head through to room 34. All the paths seem to converge at room 34, and you can actually go directly from room 30 to room 34, and that's probably the path I recommend. We need to take that exit up in the top, but to do so we need to go through that locked door and touch the magic tile. We do not want to use the exit down at the bottom, which will take us all the way back to room 30, so we don't want to go there. Hitting that magic tile will open up some space near these teleporters, and that will allow us to get where we need to go, but we can get close to the exit to grab a key, but you don't want to go in there. And then we'll head back through the teleporter, and you want to come out on this side, which will be open now that we hit that magic tile, and we're just going to follow the path around, and it should lead us to the top exit, which will take us to room 36, and that is the way that we want to go. Room 36 is another World 2 treasure room, so you know the deal by now, and it's nice this time they randomly put the exit in a place that was easy to find. So we don't have to worry too much about locating it, and can just focus on being a little bit more greedy. But don't be too greedy. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get back to the exit. Because remember, if you don't hit the exit in time, they won't refill your health, and your password won't be saved. So your password will take you back to the previous treasure room. In that locked chest right below us there, is the fifth and final upgrade, the speed upgrade, which will make Questor the Elf even faster. Pretty nice, we definitely want to get that. So we need to head down the right side, and we're going to go through all of these demons, and we want to clear out that demon generator so they don't make any more. We're going to make our way through that magic tile at the top, and we want to hit another magic tile on the left side. So head on up through the door. There's a few drinks here that we can take if we need to get our health back, but make sure not to shoot them. And we want to hit that last magic tile in the corner, which will open the space in front of the locked chest which contains the speed upgrade. Remember not to shoot it, so I like to use a bomb there to clear out those enemies. And then we can just shoot up into this exit, and we'll be on our way to room number 38. Room 38 has a lot of locked chests in it, so this feels like they're trying to steal away a lot of your keys. Be very careful about what chests you open, many of them are traps. I put a bunch of little red X's on the ones that are traps on the map, so take a look at those, but for the most part there are a lot of keys to collect, so you will be able to take part in a number of these chests, 
so when you're done with this room, you should be close to maxed out on bombs and keys if you play your cards right. Make your way around. I do recommend taking the path that goes through room 39. There is an additional speed upgrade that you can pick up there in case you missed the one in the previous room. But it's also okay to go to room 40. Room 40 is another legitimate path. In this area, you definitely don't want to touch that locked chest. It contains a death, but you may want to get the food. And there's three keys up above there. So I guess we can open up some of these chests that contain food as well. In any case, we want to try to end this one with 10 keys or at least 9. So we're going to make our way up here and hit the exit to room 39. There are just a lot of treasures here in room 39, so that's the reason why I recommended that we didn't skip over it and just go right to room 40. But if you don't worry about collecting treasures, well, I guess it's no big deal. Down here, we can actually kill a death enemy by going through the teleporter when death is on the other side. And that's where the additional speed upgrade is. So if you miss the speed upgrade in room 37, you can pick one up there. Or maybe you're playing a two-player game and you need to get one for player two. In any case, try to collect as many treasures as you can. And the exit to this one is down in the lower left corner. That's going to take us to room 40. To get to the end, we're going to have to go through that teleporter right above us. That should take us into the tunnel that'll get us through. But before that, we can come back here and collect a little bit more loot. There's a few more chests up here that we can grab. So grab those, there's a couple right here, might as well pick them up, and a couple more at the top, no reason to leave those. We want to try to get to at least the 800 treasure level before we get to world 5, which is called Volcana. That's where things get very difficult and you'll be happy that you had every point of health. So we're doing pretty good on that goal. If we get to that 800, we won't have to worry that much about treasures anymore, and we can focus more on what's important, which is conserving our keys and our bombs. Room 40 is the last regular room here in World 2, The Dark Forest. We don't want that locked chest, it contains poison, so avoid it. And we're going to make our way to the bottom. You can get those super shots, but you'd have to get the reflective shots too, so I choose to avoid them. And whenever you grab that food, that death is going to come at you, so you'll probably need to use a bomb. Work your way around these trees and you can take out that generator that makes the sorcerers. And just come on down around the bottom and then we're going to work our way back to the top. And then we need to get back to the lower right corner where the exit is. Room 41 is just a treasure room, so once we finish this one, we'll be saying goodbye to World 2 and heading on to the third world. These sorcerers are tricky though. Make sure to take out as many of them as you can. Sometimes they disappear, and whenever they've disappeared, you won't be able to damage them. So it can be difficult to feel sure that you got them all. In the upper right corner, there's a bomb potion inside of a locked chest. If you have a lot of keys and not a lot of potions, you may want to grab that. And just take this teleporter down into the lower right corner where we'll find the exit to room 41. This is the last of those World 2 treasure rooms, and I like the format of the World 2 treasure room because there's a lot of easy to grab treasure and it's not too difficult to find the exit. Once we get to World 3, the treasure rooms can get a little bit more difficult, but none of them are more frustrating than the ones that we'll see in World 4. We'll be very happy that we chose the elf when we get to those ones. World 3 is the Lost Caverns, 
and these cave-like rooms are haunted by many of the horrendous fiends from the unseen. We start off with room number 42, and this one has two paths you can go through. You can go the right path, or the wrong path. We'll go to the left first and I'll show you where that takes you. Heading left in here will put us on a path that leads to the exit that goes to room 45, and the problem with that is we need to go to room 43 to be able to access the next clue room. In any case, I'm trying to show you what all the rooms look like, so we'll head on the path that goes to 45 first. Here's a tricky one. If you touch any of those magic tiles, it'll open the wall and release all four of those deaths, and you'll most certainly have to use a bomb potion, but you can try to avoid them and walk around this way instead. Take out this enemy generator, and we'll go through a couple demons, and come up here on the top, and then if we grab that brown box, that gives us temporary repulsiveness and will make enemies run away from us. And that's a good way to avoid the deaths and those grunts here. So that's your best path. Just make the enemies run away from you, then open up that wall. And you can come down and go all the way around and you'll find the door that leads to room 44. So we went from 45 to 44, seems like we're going backwards a little bit, but this one will lead us to room number 49, so that's a nice big step forward. Down at the bottom there are a number of locked chests, and none of them are bad. You probably don't need the drink bottles, but you may need to get the one that has the bomb potion in it if you're short on bomb potions and you have a lot of keys. The locked chest that simply has a key in it is more of a waste of time than anything. It just kind of gives you your key back. Yay. So head on down to the bottom, collect as many treasure chests as you can, and we're going to make our way back up to the top after we go through here. Grab some food. You can definitely go this way. This will take you to the end of the game. But we probably want to take the other path if you want to make sure to get all the clues. Or we're going to get to level 100 and we're not going to know what all the clues are. And that could be a problem. It might not actually be a problem. I should have a solution for you. So if you don't want to write down all the clues, you don't have to. But that's the spirit of the game. You're supposed to try to get all the clues. And here's our first treasure room. But let's go back to room 42 and take the proper path by going to the right. Now we're going to collect a couple treasures here on the left. Don't worry about that. And then we'll go back to the right. The path on the right is going to lead us to room number 43. And we've seen 44 and 45 already, but 43 can take us to room 46. And 46 is the clue room. So that's one that we are very interested in going to. In this one, you need to stay inside the teleporter boxes so that you can get to the exit door that's within them. If you end up out in the hallways, you're going to have to go back to a previous level to move forward. And here's that clue room. This one isn't too difficult to figure out. The back of the arrow-shaped formation has a weak point in it that you can shoot through. So shoot on through there, and the locked chest contains the clue. And behind the locked chest, there's a magic tile, which opens the path to the exit. Once the exit path is open, try to grab as much treasure as you possibly can, and make sure to get out before the time expires. Alright, a couple more treasures, couldn't hurt, a lot of time left on the clock. And we can just go over here, maybe grab a few more. Just a couple at the bottom. Trying to get all of those. Still have almost an entire minute on the clock, so not too worried about it. We are the elf, so we can make our way very quickly to the exit. Take out some of these lobber enemies. Those guys can even shoot you across walls. And that's all we needed to do. We made it to the exit. 
And we have our third clue, the letter Y. You may have a different letter. Make sure you're writing all of these down. It depends on what the first letter or number of your password is. That will tell you what your vault code is going to be at the end of the game. Once we get that clue letter written down, this is room 47, and there are some flashing magic tiles on the left side and also at the bottom. It looks like there might be some on the right side, but those are actually stun tiles, so don't be fooled. Hit those two sets of magic tiles, and then we can come over here on the right. The way will be open, and you'll see that there's a magic tile all the way on the right wall. So we're going to need to hit that, but first we'll try to take out some of these enemy generators. Hit that magic tile, take out a few of these generators, grab that bomb potion. And then we're going to go back in through the teleporter matrix. And then we'll notice that we're a little bit more open here on the top now. And we can pick up these two keys. So we only had seven keys right now, so that should get us up to nine. Very nice. And once we have all of our keys, we can head down over to the left side. That is where the exit to room 48 is going to be. So we'll head down to the bottom and up onto the left side. And there it is, the exit to room 48. Room 48 appears to have a lot of different exits, but they all lead to room number 49. Instead, they're trying to keep you from getting some of the treasure down below where the exits are. What you're going to do here is make your way around to the right. Be careful of these grunts. Try to attack these enemies from far away. Remember, you'll take a lot of damage if the enemies hit you from behind or from the side, but you can melee attack them if you attack them from the front. Head across the top, and you're going to have to go down at some point, so take out some of these enemy generators as you move downwards. And you can see you have to walk around these exits. That's a shot upgrade, but you have it already, so you don't have to worry about that. And if you just kind of push some of those blocks out of the way, you can open up that locked chest and get yourself a bomb potion if you need it. Here is our first treasure room. Room 49. These ones can be a little bit more tricky to figure out. You don't want to get stuck in the maze and not find the exit. So kind of get used to the path in here. This will not be the last time we have to do this treasure room format. Make your way around. We see where the exit is. And go on through. And with that, we make it to room 50, which is the halfway point of the game. Of course, you don't have to actually play all 50 of the remaining levels. In fact, you would be better off to not play all of them, but I'll show you which ones to avoid. Here in level 50, we need to come across to the right, and we have to get to the top. So we're going to go through the teleporters, and just try to make your way all the way to the top middle, and whenever you get through one of those teleporters up there, you'll be able to hit that magic tile and just go through to the exit. So just keep holding up and you should be able to hit a magic tile and you'll go right up through. Very, very easy. It looks like there's a whole bunch of bombs to collect here in room 51, but those are actually poison, so avoid them. You'll want to make your way to either exit this one takes you to room 52, which you'll want to avoid if you're trying to collect all of the clues. This is a good way to go if you're not worried about clues, but it does start you out in the middle of a whole bunch of chaos, but they do give you a bunch of keys here, so if you're short on keys, this could be a good place to pick up a bunch of them. We need to make our way around and touch some magic tiles to open up the path that leads to room 55. You can see the exits in the top middle. So we'll come around onto this side, 
touch that magic tile. And then when we go back over onto the left, we'll see that there's an opening on the right side. So now there's an opening and we can exit to room 55. Room 55 is a treasure room, so if you're trying to get through fast, that is quite a shortcut. But instead here in room number 51, we should try to go to the right side. Watch out if you hit a stun tile, make sure to pause. Also remember to avoid those bombs. They are not bombs, they're poisons. And you want to take the exit in the lower right corner. That's going to take us to room 53, and this one will connect us to another clue room. There are a lot of locked chests here in room 53, but you'll want to save your keys for the most part, except for these ones on the far left side. Those contain some bomb potions, which you may or may not need. Up here at the top, there's a few more chests that we can grab before we hit the exit, and it looks like we just collected our 800th treasure, and now our max hit points are 1,420. Nice. Once we go through the exit, we will be in the clue room. They give you three keys at the beginning, which is quite generous, so you'll then go through the first two key doors and make your way all the way back to the top, where we can head to the left, and that's where we'll find the lock chest flanked by poison potions, which will damage you, so be careful not to touch those, but in the middle you'll get the clue. If you head over to the right, we'll be able to get two keys for the price of one, and down in the lower right corner, we'll find the exit to room 55. We now have four of the eight clues that we need to enter room 100. Room 55 is another one of those spiral treasure rooms. And you want to get familiar with this layout. The dead ends are always in the same place. If you hit a dead end this time, remember where it is, and then try not to go that way the next time. It'll save you a bit of time. So like up here, there's a dead end. So now that we know that, we won't go that way the next time. And we know where the exit is, so that's handy. We can grab a few extra treasures and then make our way back to the door. There's actually a warning in the instruction manual that there's a room in World 3 where you'll find some bombs and treasures that you can't get. And that room is this one. There's a big old treasure trove in here. There it is over there on the right. And you cannot get it. It'll drive you nuts trying to figure it out. But that's just what it does. It's a trick. Instead, we need to focus on getting out of here. You'll need to break through a few walls and take out some of these sorcerers. Make sure to get rid of their generator. And over here, we can hit a magic tile, which will open up another wall. So make your way over to the right. Try to take out a couple of these guys, and we're going to head down through here. And just keep going to the right. Down here, there's a locked chest if you want to get it but I recommend that you save your keys. And instead, we're going to cut through here, go through that wall and stay along the bottom, and we'll find our final magic tile here. So hit this one, and that's going to open the way to the exit, which is going to take us to room 57. We just have to get back up there. So go back through, and you can see the way now. We just gotta get back up to that next row, and there it is. That one can be quite annoying, especially if you focus on trying to get all that loot. There are no more clues to find in World 3, so you'd like to get to the end as quickly as possible. To do that, you should take the upper exit here, which leads to room 60. But if you want to see all the rooms, we'll go and take a look at room 58 instead. There's some destructible blocks below us that we'll want to take out. And there's going to be a death that appears in there, so you'll probably need to use a bomb to get rid of him. You can go over to the left or the right. We'll head over to the right here and take out these lobbers. And inside that locked chest is a magic tile, which will open up the path that lets you out. 
over here through the teleporter, we can hit another magic tile, which will open up another path above. And there's two ways out of here. I recommend going to round 61, but if you'd rather skip that and go to 62, then that's probably a good idea as well. You don't want to take the exit in the upper right, that'll take you back to 57. But if you're already in 58, it seems like you want to see a lot of the level, so you might as well check out 61. Any of the exits will lead you to room 62, and you want to try to not waste any keys in here. Don't open up a door that leads to a room that you already have access to, and try to avoid going into the room in the lower right corner. There's no key inside that one. Most of these rooms will give you your key back. You need to hit several of those magic tiles to be able to open up the way to any of the exits. So just make your way around. You should be able to find them all. That should be the last one there in the bottom middle. So we'll head over into there, grab that last key. And we could open up that magic tile, but any of these exits are as good as any other. So we'll head into room 62. 62 is the last room in world 3, but there's a couple that we haven't been to yet. So let's go back to room 57 and see what happens if we take the top exit that leads to room number 60. So you need to hit that magic tile to get that wall opened and head through the exit. In room number 60, we can get through this one very fast. Just open that locked chest and that will open a wall and lead us to room 59. Although there is a way you can just go all the way around and get into the room with the exits and take the middle exit, which will take us directly to room 62. That could be a good way to go. But if you want to see room 59, that's one of the only ways to access it. We can use this teleporter and there are a lot of treasures in here, so room 59 might actually be worth stopping in. The way to get out is to hit this teleporter and hold down and left when you go through it so that you go into that narrow hallway. And that will lead us to room 62, which is the end of world 3. This time let's actually complete it. Try to grab as many treasure as you can in the center and try to avoid those dead ends. So we'll go through here. We don't want to go up, we just want to go down there. Curve around, grab the treasure and go up at that juncture. Go around and there is the exit. And that's it. We're on to World 4. World 4 is called The Unseen, and there's an underwater theme that's going on here that sometimes makes the walls invisible. Yeah, it's a little bit obnoxious. And that's what we have to deal with here in room 63. You can use your shots and also enemies as a guide to help you figure out where you can walk around in here. You're trying to find that exit which will lead you to room 64, and there's also some treasures to pick up if you can get them, but for the most part I'm hoping just to try to get to the end. Avoid that box that gives you the reflective shots, although sometimes the reflective shots can kind of help you figure out where the walls are, but they still are annoying whenever you're wanting to fight enemies. And that's it. We found our way through this time, and now it's time to do it again in room 64. This time we need to hit that magic tile though to make that block go away. Once you get to that big string of treasures, you're pretty close to the exit, so try to stay along the bottom, and you should be able to get in there. And that will take you to room 65. Alright, more invisible walls. There are multiple exits this time. We want to take the exit that's down in the lower part of the room. That's going to lead us to 66, which is a clue room. If we take one of the upper exits, We'll end up at 67, and 67 will bypass the clue room and we'll miss out on that clue. There's some food to grab down at the bottom, 
and if you can get the food, you should be able to get into the exit. It's not very far from there. So we want to go up and a little bit around. Just kind of keep feeling your way around. Shoot at things if you have to. And you should be able to find your way through the invisible walls and to room 66, which is the clue room. You may need to use some of your bomb potions here, but there are more to be found right up at the top of this room, so you might as well. Grab the clue over there in that room. And there are two exits this time. If you want to be able to see all the rooms, we're going to take the exit at the top, which will lead to room number 67. A lot of enemies up here. And we now have the fifth clue which coincidentally is a five. There is a very good reason why we didn't want to skip past room number 67. It's a treasure room. Unfortunately, World 4 has the most obnoxious treasure rooms in the entire game. There are a ton of false exits, and you want to avoid trying to collect the treasure and just focus on trying to touch as many exits as possible. This is why we're playing as the elf. It will give us the best chance of actually finding the exit here. Sometimes these rooms can be very frustrating. Alright, we need to pause here. And that was it, okay. Whew, man, every time I do one of those, it's like, are we really going to find the exit or not? At first glance, it seems like room 68 doesn't have an exit at all. There's two keys in the upper right corner, and you're going to need those. Pick them up, and then we're going to go down to the lower right corner, and you want to clear out as many enemies as you can down here, and grab some of those treasure chests. What we're going to have to do is open both of those locked chests, but the first one that we open contains a death, and we don't want to waste one of our potions, so instead what we're going to do is... Get him out of there and run him around. And if we go over to the right corner, we should be able to loop around and kind of lose him down there. Perfect. Now inside that second locked chest is the exit, which takes us to room 69. Nice. There are several teleporters in here, and our first objective is to get over onto the right side, where we can touch that magic tile, which will open up a new path for us. Once that tile's open, we want to go to the teleporter that's on the left side, and whenever you teleport through, I like to hold the down button. It doesn't always work, but we hopefully want to teleport to the teleporter up above. So hold down when you go through here. And it worked for me this time. Up here we can hit that magic tile. And then we just want to continue on up through. Grab as many treasures as you can and just make your way across the top and over to the left. Down at the bottom, we will find the exit that will take you to room 70. Get out of my way, acid puddles. Alright, here we go. Room 70 is another clue room. This time, we didn't have to do anything fancy to find the clue room, but the clue is in a tricky location. It's down in the lower right corner, and you have to shoot at the air in the upper right corner of that room and you'll find it. So clear out these monster generators, and then there it is. That's the clue. Now the exit could be the bottom or the top. One of them is a fake, and it's not always the same. So we need to look for some magic tiles so that we can open the way. There's actually an invisible barrier blocking us from going to the top exit right now. So we'll explore up here and see if that opens anything up. Take out these enemy generators. Oh, there's a hidden magic tile. Let's see what that opened. It opened the way to the bottom, and oh, that exit is good. So now we have our sixth piece of the clue. This one is number four. And there's another one of those teleporter treasure rooms. Remember, don't focus on collecting treasure. 
just try to touch as many exits as possible. So go around and just hit as many as you can. You can use the treasure chests as sort of breadcrumbs so you know where you've been already. But, oh, okay, there it is. It's always a dicey affair in those. If you miss the exit, you could end up with very little health moving forward. There are no more clues to find in World 4, so at this point, you just want to make your way to the end as quickly as possible. Here in room 72, there are two exits. You want to try to avoid touching these doors, so just move slowly around these corners, carefully tapping the direction so you don't touch those. And if you go up through here, you can actually skip forward to room 75. If you'd like to see all the rooms, this may not be the best way to go. If you just want to get to the end of World 4, I definitely recommend skipping ahead to Room 75 right now. But if you want to see Room 73, we want to come down to the bottom, and we should be able to get right into the exit. It's that simple. Room 73 is another one of those invisible rooms, but we should be pretty good at them at this point. This one is very similar to one that we've played before, so you want to get to that line of treasure, take out the ghost generators at the bottom, and then just get up into the exit. Room 74, however, does not have invisible walls. If we come down to the bottom, we can actually kill death down here by pushing through this teleporter and jumping onto the same spot where he is. So we want death to come up to the teleporter and then just press on through him and death will be defeated. We don't even have to use a bomb. There's a lot of treasure in that room right there, but you have to use two keys to get it, one to open the door and one to open the locked chest and that locked chest actually contains a reflective shot, which is very annoying. So we're not actually going to go in there at this point. You decide if you'd actually like to go in there and collect all that treasure. If you need the food, it could be more important to you. We're doing pretty good on food right now, so we don't need those three drinks. There are a lot of drinks just sitting around in room 74 that you can pick up without using a key. You may need to use a number of bombs to get through some of those acid pools. So ideally, you'd like to be able to get several of them with one bomb. Once you have enough treasure, the exit is all the way up on the left side. You have to go up to the top and then back down to the bottom left corner, where we'll find an exit that will take us to room 75. Hit a couple stun tiles and go through here. There's another one. Remember, you can pause the game to negate a stun tile, and you may need to do that several times here. Lots of stun tiles in our way. Thanks a lot, Gauntlet. Very annoying. Grab that treasure, and there's the exit to 75. Room 75 is an interesting one. Over here, we can get a power shot, and you can see what that does. We can shoot one arrow and just watch it push through all of those walls. It doesn't kill the death, so. Up here, though, we can get the temporary repulsiveness, and that will make the deaths move away from us for the most part. There are two paths you can take to get through this level. One of them will take you to room 78, which will get us out of here. But if you want to see all the rooms, we can check out room 76. We are almost to world 5, so we want to be conservative about our keys and our bomb potions. If you show up to world 5 with no keys, you're going to get stuck, and you're going to need as many bomb potions as you possibly can to get through those final levels. We have a decent number of keys right now, 7 or 8 should be enough. We can open a locked chest over here to get some temporary invulnerability, which will make our health go down faster, but we won't have to worry about any of these sorcerers. And we can just hit that magic tile, and well, we want to go back over to the right here, so go to this one, and head down, and go through the exit, 
to room 77. Room 77 has a bunch of treasure at the top of it, but now is not really the time for that. Just try to get through here. You want to teleport over to this area, and then we just need to go down across the bottom, and we'll be able to find a path that will take us over to the left, and we'll be able to get out to room 78. This is the last time we have to do this obnoxious teleporter treasure room. The ones in World 5 are actually a lot more friendly. The only problem with the ones in World 5 is whatever password we get always will take you back to room 79. So that part's kind of annoying. But we've done it. We're on to the last world. Volcana. You better get good at room 79, because if you die and continue, this is where you'll be coming back to. Hopefully you have a lot of keys and bombs. You need to do your best to conserve your health, but you do not want to use your bombs in here. Try to only use your bombs when you absolutely have to. There's a lot of enemies and they are very vicious, so do your best to conserve your health. And there are three exits from this room. If you need to get the last two letters of the clue, we need to go to room 80. But if you already know what the clue is, you definitely want to take the fastest path through World 5 so that we can avoid taking as much damage and using as many bombs as possible. So you actually want to take the hidden path through room 83, which is actually between where that food and the bomb is down here. But we need to get those last two letters in the clue, so let's head on over to room 80. There are a lot of exits here in room 80, and one of them is deadly. There's actually an exit inside of a treasure chest over here that takes you to room 79, but that's not where we want to go. And if you come over here, you can see that death exit. This is it. It actually kicks you back to the title screen. What a beating! Somebody must have felt like this was a really mean trick, because they actually warn you about it in the instruction manual. There's a couple paths that will take you to room 81. There's one right down below us that's actually a good way to go. But if you don't mind going into the middle here, this one will also take you to room 81. Whichever exit takes you to room 81 is good, because that's where we're going to find the next letter of the clue. The clue itself is in the chest over on the left side. The chest on the right there is a trap, but we want to get the two locked chests on the right side as well, because those are magic tiles that will open up the way through. We can go from here to room 79, which is back the way we came, or we can go check out room 82, but room 82 is going to end up looping us back anyway, so you probably actually want to go to room 79 and just write down this clue letter. The clue letters are not going to change, so once you know what they are, you don't have to go back and do those clue rooms again. There are two exits here, but they both take you backwards. That one will take you to room 81, but you're probably better off just trying to find the exit that will take you to room 79, and to get there you need to actually go pretty deep into room 82, so you want to take out some of these ghosts, get up there and take out their generators so that they won't come back, grab as much treasure as you can, make sure to pick up that key, you want to head down this middle channel so that we can hit those magic tiles. That'll open up the paths over to the left. There is a whole bunch of food down at the bottom you can grab, but you want to get back to the teleporters at the top once you hit those magic tiles, because those will take you into this narrow hallway, and then you can get over into the left side and shoot through the walls which will lead us back to room 79. So if you already knew the clue letters, whenever you started here in room 79, you want to go to room 83. 83 is going to take us on the path that we want to go that will lead us to the end of the game. If you're repeating this room because we went to the clue room, 
You may not have a lot of health to work with, but the good news is if we can get to room 83, that's actually a treasure room, and we'll be able to get a full health refill assuming we could find the exit. So grab whatever loot you can, and we're going to shoot through the wall below where that potion was. And there it is. That's going to take us to room 83. This is an easier treasure room than the ones in World 4, but you still don't want to worry about getting all of the treasure, you just want to try to hit as many of the exits as you can. So just be systematic about it. Oh, and there it is. That'll bring us back to 1,420 health. Unfortunately, if we continue or use a password, we'll go back to room 79, not room 83. But room 83 isn't too hard to get to from room 79. From here, we go to room 84. Room 84 is another mean one. There's a ton of exits in here, and most of them will take you to room 85, which is just going to loop you back to room 84 again. We need to find the exit that takes you to room 86, and it's the one in the upper left corner. But before we go there, I do want to show you all the rooms, so we'll make our way over to any of the exits and check out room 85. Room 85 is essentially a penalty room for going through the wrong exit in room 84. There is an armor upgrade here if you somehow don't already have it, and there are a decent number of treasures, so once you've cleared most of the monsters, you might as well pick up some of the treasures, but if you end up in room 85, you'll likely end up bleeding a key and a bomb before you're done, so you would ideally like to avoid this one. The exit is in the upper left corner, and it will take you back to room 84, where this time you'll need to go out the proper door. There's a bunch of stun tiles around the exit door, very annoying. And we made it out of there and are back to room 84. Let's do it the right way this time, shall we? The way to actually make it to the proper exit door is to go around the bottom and you want to come up through this door with the two treasure chests in it and shoot up into that room with the first exit and you need to carefully walk around those exit doors so you don't accidentally walk into one. So just kind of tap the directions very carefully and get around. And that's how you make it to the door that will take us to room 86. Room 86 is a major test to see how few of your bombs you can actually use. The grunts in here deal so much damage and will eat you alive if left unchecked. So carefully make your way around and try to avoid using all of your bombs, but you'll probably have to use a couple of them. Down here at the bottom especially, there's four of those acid puddles. Getting around them without using a bomb is quite tough. You can try to collect treasure if you want to. Getting to that 1600 mark is probably not going to happen unless you start repeating rooms, which is something that may happen and you would have the option to do, but otherwise you just want to get to the exit as quickly as you can. The way to get through room 87 is to head to the left and carefully take out any enemies in your way. You're just going to work your way all the way to the bottom, and then you want to go back to the top. So you'll go through a bunch of enemies and we are at very low health now, which is going to make it very tempting to use up all of our bombs, so we need to be super strategic about them. There's an invulnerability box there, so that can help out for a moment. And we made it to the treasure room, if we can just find the exit, that's going to refill our health and that should end our problems. So we need to be very careful to not worry about treasure and just worry about touching as many exits as possible. Come on, come on. Where is it? Be very systematic in here and you should be able to find it. And we did. Sometimes you may miss the exit in World 4, 
but as the elf, you should always be able to find it in World 5. We are super close to the end now. We certainly don't have to play the remaining 12 levels. A lot of them are going to be dead ends, so we're only going to need to visit a few of them to get to the end from here. Room 89 is another tough one. Remember, we want to save as many of our bombs as we can for the end. Take out these generators over here and you should be able to grab three keys. We're doing very good on keys, but we need to resist the temptation to use all of our bombs. Make your way around here. Going through one of those locked chests will take you to room 91, which could be a good way to go if you already know what the clue letters you need are. But if you need that last piece of the clue, we need to go into this locked chest, which will take you to room 90. In room 90, there are a lot of locked chests. Many of them are traps, but we have a decent number of keys, so if you want to grab a couple of bombs, this could be a good place to do it. There's actually one right near there, and there's one in this chest which we can grab. And once you're satisfied with the number of bombs you have, we want to head over here and actually get the clue. The clue is at the end of this long hallway, so be careful of these grunts. Remember, they can deal us a ton of damage, and it's inside that locked chest at the very end. Once you have the clue, you're going to want to get out of here, but how do we get to the exit? Well, you need to get through all of this chaos over here. Don't let those grunts attack you from behind. Take out these lobber enemies. And make sure to take out their generator. Once their generator is defeated, don't use any of your bombs yet. There's going to be a death whenever we shoot through the wall here. That's when we're going to use the bomb. So, there he is. Clear him using a bomb and go into the exit. If you can get through that part without using a bomb, that's great, but a lot of times it's not worth the effort. Trying to let death chase you around with all those enemies can be a big problem. And that's it. We now have all eight digits of the clue. We're on to room 91. There's a lot of enemies here, but it was nice of them to give us an invisibility to start the room off with. Look around for the exit. It may not always be in the same place, but it should be in one of the corners. And we're on to room 92, which is the last treasure room in the game. You definitely don't want to miss the exit here. We're so close to the end, and you'll definitely need your health refilled at this point. If you get to the next level and you don't have your health refilled, you'll almost definitely die. And with that, we're on to room 93. 93 is going to take us to 94, and 94 is one of the key levels to the end game. Before we can get to 94 though, 93 can be a tough one. There seems to be two exits in here, but one of them's a fake. We're going to make our way to the bottom. There's a locked chest at the bottom here when you go through this teleporter and head to the left. That one contains a bomb, so you want to make sure to get it. Hit that magic tile and that should open the way to the exit at the top. And we can go through this teleporter over here, go through that enemy generator first. This should take us to the exit. And here is room 94. Room 94 has three different exits to it, and two of them are a trap. So let's take a look at the first trap one over here, the one that leads to room 95. Room 95 has the same layout as room 69. The enemies are just more difficult this time. You want to go over to the right side and hit that magic tile. And then I like to hold down when I go through this teleporter to hopefully get to this top area. And then you can just work your way across the top and down the left side where you'll find the exit that takes you to room 96. And room 96 has no exit. It's a death trap. That's right. They made no possible way to escape this one. 
It'll drive you nuts trying to shoot all the walls. But there's nothing here. It's a ha 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 room. Game over. Do not go to room 95. That's how it ends. So what if we go to room 97 instead? That might even be worse. Heading over here to the right side will take us to room 97. And I've only been in this room a couple times. I'm not sure that the exit is always in the same place, but whenever you find it, it will take you to room 98. And room 98 is also a trap. So hopefully we'll be able to find the exit and actually see room 98. Let's see. It's got to be around here somewhere. One of these. There it is. All right. Room 98 only has one exit to it, and it's hidden inside of a locked chest. And that exit will take you all the way back to room 32. Aside from that, this one has invisible walls and a bunch of locked chests that have enemy generators inside of them, so room 98 is just mean. But getting sent back to room 32? Yeah. No thank you. So the real way that we need to go is through the secret exit on the left side wall. The best way to get up there is to go to the right side and then make your way to the left across the breasts. Try to avoid using as many of your bombs as you can and you'll find the exit hidden in a block over on the left wall. Room 99 is so hard, you're immediately attacked by four deaths and there's like nine million enemy generators. You want to try to get as much bang for your buck out of your bombs as you can. So if you're going to use one or two, make sure that it clears as many enemies as possible. And then you just need to make your way around to the right. You'll come down around this area and there's an acid pool which sometimes gets in the way but you don't want to use one of your bombs so just kind of let it move along and hopefully you'll be able to get around it. We only have one bomb right now and you definitely don't want to go into room 100 with less than one bomb. If you have zero bombs you're in big trouble but would be in much better shape if we had three or four. Oh well. Trying to show all the levels makes it pretty hard to get here with that many bombs, so that's why I recommend trying to take the fastest path through World 5 as you can. Make your way down the left side, being careful of these grunts that can deal just so much damage, and when you go through the exit, we will reach the Vault of Morak. Now if you put in the wrong code, you'll come into room 100 and die, so be very careful. We need to enter all of the clue letters right here. Now, if you don't know all the letters in your vault combination, don't panic. As long as you know what the first letter of your password is, now that's the password that you would use to continue the game, not the vault combination, I'm going to include a table here that will show you exactly what your vault combination is. So if you're missing some letters, just follow the table there on the left, and that will help you enter Room number 100. This is it. The sacred orb is in here. We want to use one of our bombs right in this position here. That will clear a lot of monster generators and save us some headache later. If we come down to the bottom here, we can get another bomb. And then we need to go down this narrow hallway, killing any of these grunts in our way. These grunts can deal a ton of damage, so make sure to take out this enemy generator. And then there's a couple more enemy generators down here that we'll want to remove, and then we can go pick up that food, which will probably be pretty handy at this point. Right now we only have one more bomb. If you had a couple bombs, you're probably going to want to use one as you go around the bend up here. Try to hit as many monster generators as you can. And here's the boss, the Three-Headed Hydra. We need to be super careful not to wake up all three heads at once. Whenever you shoot one of the heads, it's going to wake up. This is how you're going to do it. We're going to shoot the head on the right, get close to it, and just hold the button in so you're shooting it. And whenever you see it turn towards you, you want to walk over to the left. 
So get in this position right here, and when you see it move, you're gonna go over onto the right and start shooting, and when you see it move again, you're gonna head back over to the left. And just keep doing that. Whenever you see the head move, that's when you move. So you're watching the head for movement, and the most important thing here is that you don't accidentally wake up any of the other heads. So before you actually push the fire button, do a quick mental check and make sure that you're facing forward and not forward and at an angle, which sometimes the game seems to try to put you at an angle for some reason, like it wants you to wake up that middle head. The one on the left is easy, once the right head is destroyed you can hide out in this spot where the right head was, and then just move up and hit the left one. And then we just need to deal with the center head, which we can defeat by attacking from the left and the right side. Whenever it turns towards you, move over to the other side and just keep shooting it from an angle. And this guy will never hit you. Pretty nice. Just keep doing it. It takes about 40 shots to kill each head. And once you defeat all three heads, the Hydra will explode and we'll be able to hit that magic tile behind it and open the path to the sacred orb. You need to be careful here. Don't panic. Once you kill the Hydra, you may think that you've won the game, but there's still a little bit more that you have to do. So don't mess up right after you destroy the Hydra. You still need to be careful. You see those sorcerers behind him? Those guys can deal you a lot of damage, and right now we only have 200 health. Yeah, we need to be very, very careful. We want to use a bomb up there to clear all those monster generators. Do your best to take out those ones. And then you need to come up here, shoot through that wall, and hit that magic tile. Come back down to where the Hydra was. Up past the exit, hit the magic tile, clear that last monster generator, and get the sacred orb before you exit. If you don't get the sacred orb, you won't get a good ending. And that's it. Victory. We have saved Rendar. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. But for all the rooms that we had to clear to get here, this is all of the ending that we get. So enjoy it for what it is. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Gauntlet and restore peace to the world of Rendar. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos. But there will always be more sacred orbs that need to be found. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.